morning. Thank you all for joining us on a very historic day. As we're here to fight for accessibility for all, the Supreme Court has found that marriage should be accessible for everyone in this great nation. And so uh, first off, I'm just hope we can all cheer for marriage equality. Woo! I represent the Upper East Side, where we have a large aging population. Uh, we have a lot of seniors, and our city's only getting older. Uh, I also get to spend a lot of my time at uh, senior centers like uh, Stanley Isaacs Neighborhood Center, and they've joined us today. And uh, when I was running for office, I had thousands and thousands of conversations. And one of the conversations that kept happening over and over again was with people who just are pedestrians or use a cane or a walker or a wheelchair and we're telling me how our city's become more and more inaccessible and I was hearing stories again and again about how they're trying to get somewhere they're trying to get to a doctor's appointment they're trying to see family and then they hit that corner where they can't get off the street and they can't get out of danger or they can't even get off the block because that day there was construction and now that block's not accessible just so many people talking about how inaccessible our city's become. And so I went to the DOT and I said, what's going on here? And they said, well, we passed a law that said landlords are responsible, and we put a lien on the property, and once there's a lien on the property, that's it. And I said, okay, so when does the landlord have to fix it? And they said, well, the landlord, a corporation, has to fix it if they ever sell the building. And I said, well, don't people just buy corporations now instead of buying the land? And they said, oh, absolutely. So I said, so basically, most of these buildings where we have the curb cuts that are not accessible are never going to be fixed. And they said, yeah, that's a problem. So we've been working together for a year and we proposed legislation and we're here with the disability community to say that we want to have 100% accessible sidewalks and any time there's a curb cut that's not accessible, we want DOT to go in and fix it. And then they can bill back the landlord. But at the end of the day, we want to make sure that every single New Yorker can access every single sidewalk. I want to just uh, thank the advocates that I'm here with today. We're joined by Susan Zua, Executive Director of the Center for the Independence of the Disabled of New York, an organization I've been proud to work with uh, around making government and elections more accessible for years. Uh, Eugene from the Director of Advocacy Programs for MS Society New York City, Southern New York Chapter. Edith Prentice, Vice President of Legislative Affairs for Disabled in Action of Metropolitan New York a veritable uh, mainstay. Uh, if you're fighting for disability rights, if Edith isn't with you, then uh, you're not fighting for disability rights. Uh, Lester Marks, MPA Director of Government Affairs and Administration at Lighthouse Guild. Uh, Tamisha Coleman, Bronx Independent Living Services Program Manager. Aaron Rooney, Clinical Manager at Stanley Isaac Senior Center, joined by members. Chris Widello of ARP. Anthony Feliciano, Executive Director of the Commission on Public Health System. Michael J. Weinberg, Executive Director of Disability Pride NYC. And uh, one other piece to share is uh, this is a historic year because in 1990 we signed the Americans with Disabilities Act into law. And 25 years later, after incredible progress has been made, in no small part because of the advocates here today, we're here to try to make sure that our city and our sidewalks are able to be a little bit more accessible. In fact, a lot more accessible. And in June 2014, part of what spurred this is a study done by the Center for the Independence of the Disabled in uh, Lower Manhattan, where they surveyed 157 intersections where 1,066 needed curb cuts sites were documented. What they found was shocking. 242 sites had no curb cuts at all. DOT should fast track and get those curb cuts installed. That is actually their mandate under the law. 564 curb cuts, uh, of those, 75% were inaccessible. Uh, there were many reasons for this, including obstructing objects, crumbling concrete, a bear in the pathway, or more. But the fact that 75% of sidewalk ramps were inaccessible is simply unfair. And when we talk about who's affected, there are 889,219 New Yorkers with disabilities and new, near, nearly 1 million residents 65 or older, and that number is only growing. So there's no excuse. This law is here to fix that, 
and hopefully with all of our support and advocacy, we can make that happen. I'd like to now ask uh, Susan Duha, Executive Director of Center for the Independence of the Disabled of New York, to please uh, speak and please, if everyone can please speak. We are on camera and folks will be watching this, so the louder you can be, the more likely that the camera will pick up our voices. Thank you. Thank you, Council Member Kalos. It is a fantastic day to be here at City Hall celebrating so many important victories. And we're about to celebrate the 25th anniversary of the Disability Civil Rights Law, the Americans with Disabilities Act. But our work remains undone because New Yorkers with disabilities are unable to get to work, to pick up their kids at school, to go to the doctor, to go to the theater, to simply go down the street, to sit at a cafe with friends because of the state of our streets. Our streets are not safe for people with disabilities because curb cuts have not been installed and properly maintained. We did a report on the lack of accessibility in Lower Manhattan in part because so many people with disabilities live here, but also because so many government offices and services are here. And we are constantly here trying to influence government to pay attention to community needs. Our report found that the city has a long way to go. It needs to correct the 75% of curb surfaces that we found to be completely inaccessible. And it has more to do to address these issues all across the city. It isn't only Lower Manhattan that has this issue. It is everywhere. We expect this administration to set a high standard for civil rights compliance. That's why we're so proud to be here on this day when we see equality flags flying on City Hall. And we're proud to celebrate this moment for everyone. We want attention to our civil rights also. And we look forward to receiving that attention from this administration. Again, we applaud Council Member Kalos for his initiative. Thank you. I'd like to now ask uh, Chris Manello, Associate State Director for AARP New York, to please. Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is Chris Manello with AARP uh, here in New York City. I am the Associate State Director for uh, government relations and advocacy. And uh, I want to thank uh, Council Member Kalos for inviting uh, me here to speak today on an, a, a very important issue as part of AARP's Livable Communities Agenda dealing with uh, curb cuts and curb ramps. Uh, walking and traveling on sidewalks, especially for New York City, in a city like New York City, is, important, is an important method of transportation for residents and visitors. After driving cars, walking is the second most popular means of getting around. A recent National Household Travel Safety study showed that urban non-drivers over the age of 65 made 21% of their trips on foot. And over the age of 75, that figure is 19%. Safe pedestrian pathways are a key component of a transit system. And since walking is the most common mode uh, of transportation to access things like public transportation, buses, trains, subways. The 2014 AARP surveyed New York City voters 50 and older. And we found that a majority of 50 plus voters identified pedestrian safety issues in their community to be a problem. And of those that felt that way, a majority identified issues pertaining to sidewalks and crosswalks uh, to be an issue. What this all means is people are using sidewalks and the curb ramps that trans transition between sidewalks and crosswalks here in the city streets. It just makes sense that curb ramps are well maintained and appropriate to those traveling on New York City sidewalks so they can do, do so easily and in a safe manner. It is of particular importance that those that are disabled or have a, it is of particular importance to those who are disabled or have a mobility impairment. A poorly designed or maintained curb ramp could serve as an obstacle or even put someone in danger. AARP commends Council Member Kalos for proposing this important bill and we thank you for the opportunity to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you very much.
I'd uh, like to now invite uh, Edith Prentiss, Vice President of Legislative Affairs and Disabled in, for Disabled in Action of Metropolitan New York. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Um, I think it's very important, as Susan mentioned, a great problem we have is bad head ramps. Head ramps that were built in the era that God knows how they were planned or designed. Unfortunately, the city has gone through a phase where they were apex ramps. Now they're on weirder ramps that TDC is proposing. Um, but the bottom line is, unless a ramp is maintained, I recently came across a ramp that had an eight inch gap between the end of the concrete and the blacktop. I can jump that, but I ride the shuttle too. Most people with disabilities who use chairs do not. Most people memorize their community. They know exactly where they can go, where they can turn, where they can get on and off the sidewalk. That's ridiculous. When we go to a new community, can't find the pet ramp, you have no idea. We need standardization, we need better repairs, we need a conference a conversation with DOT about these ramps. If they're going to be taking on the responsibility of doing these, they need to do them right. Ramps are going to, ramps seem to last forever. Ironically, a ramp was put in in my, in a, my neighborhood in front of a store, and last winter it dissolved. Whatever was being used to melt the snow dissolved the ramp. It took three months for the ramp to be replaced. The entire issue of snow in winter is a bigger nightmare, but during summer, we should be able to be able to move through our community, and we shouldn't have to memorize the community. There are people who know exactly what bus they, what block they have to wheel on, what corner they can get on. That's too much energy to simply cross the street. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, now I'd like to call on Eugene from the MS Society of New York City, Southern New York chapter. Okay, uh, <laughs> our next person will be uh, uh, Lester Marks from Lighthouse Guild. Thank you. Good morning, my name is Lester Marks from Lighthouse Guild. Uh, Lighthouse is an organization that's been serving people who are blind and visually impaired for uh, over 105 years. Part of the, what we do is we train people who are blind and visually impaired to travel and safely travel. And one of the, the common um, problems I hear from our vision rehab staff is that the, the pedestrian ramps are improperly installed, not properly maintained, and, and they cause a hazard for somebody who's blind or visually impaired. If you think about how somebody who's uh, blind or visually impaired travels, that pedestrian ramp is an important conveyor of information and lets them know that they're getting to it in the street and it's safe to cross. So this bill, I want to thank Councilmember Kalos for taking um, a long-standing problem for our community and addressing it and putting teeth into city law that will hopefully effectuate change and allow people to travel uh, safely throughout the city. So we thank Councilmember Kalos and look forward to supporting this bill and signing it one day with the mayor. Thank you. Thank you. I'd like to now invite uh, Tamisha Coleman. Okay. I'd like to invite uh, Elspeth from Stanley Isaacs uh, to come say a couple of words. Uh, as well as Brenda, if you want to say a couple of words. Okay. Absolutely. Elspeth is one of the strongest advocates we have, we have in our community, and she used to work with the assembly member Pete Grant. She's retired from uh, working for the government, but she is not retired from being an activist. But that is wonderful. Everybody who is handicapped, because you have to keep going on and stand up to your heights, regardless of it's good to take the senior center, the young people, because it can happen to everybody. Uh, I have been working in the past also, then you have the sidewalk which they are not even curved. So I go a long time back to, to say, but your health is so important. Your mind has a lot of power. 
part of you have to keep going on and the more people you are together, the stronger you will be. But when you have a council member like the Ben Carlos, you are in good health. I'd like to now ask Anthony Feliciano. So folks may wonder what uh, my organization is doing here since we do public health issues. Particularly it's about because we believe where you live, where you work, where you play, impacts your health. It's the wellness of this of New Yorkers. And so we're here because we support anything that can equalize the accessibility, the mobility for everyone across New York. That not only the folks that are marginalized, and everyone has to have opportunities to get to go through in their own block, in their own neighborhood, in their own community, in their own city. And so we're here because we support this. I'm a person who lives in Lower East Side, parts of Lower Manhattan. I, because of the work we do, I kind of see what the curb cuts look like. So this is not just for just people with disabilities and seniors. And this is all good for all New Yorkers. And so we need to ensure that this is one step of moving forward when it comes to people with disabilities and seniors being equalized when it comes to access, when it comes to everything in New York and all the opportunities they can get. Thank you. Executive Director of Disability Pride NYC, who is having an amazing day today. Hi. Um, as Executive Director of uh, Disability Pride, I'm very proud to be working with the Mayor's Office of People with Disabilities to present the first annual Disability Pride Parade, which will be marching down Broadway on July 12th. Um, I'm particularly happy to be here to try to remind folks uh, that we are the largest minority. The disability community does constitute the largest minority. Uh, we, a central goal of the parade is to change the public's perception of people with disabilities. And that's necessary because they need to be reminded that we are all just a, an accident illness or a few years away from being members of the disability community. So this legislation not only affects all people here and, and the community, it affects future generations. It is absolutely necessary. Uh, another goal of our parade is to instill or reinforce pride in all members of the disability community. This legislation Citizens, 